in mortality by, by employment grade or occupational grade. So what is social epidemiology? By now, you probably have an idea of what social epidemiology is. As I discussed earlier, social epidemiology is defined as the study of the social distribution of the social determinants of states of health and populations. Now, social epidemiology has two basic underlying assumptions. One we've already talked about, that health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being. So it's not simply the absence of disease and disability. It's not just mortality, which is what we often think of, but it relates also to various morbidities that affect quality of life. And second is that health is socially distributed across both space and across time. And that basically means that there are health and illness distribution patterns that are based on social factors. And those social factors may include groups of people, social risk groups. They may include geography or time elements. So what I'd like to do is use the recent epidemic of obesity to illustrate throughout the rest of this session how to use an epidemiological approach to address population health outcomes. And obesity is a good example because it is distributed, socially distributed, ab across both space and time. So obesity rates have skyrocketed over the past 20 years, and they show very clear distribution patterns by both space and time, as I mentioned. So we can think about, again, life course epidemiology. 18 to 29-year-olds have the high or experience the highest rates of obesity in the nation. Those with some college education, as an indicator of socioeconomic status, experience the highest rates of obesity. Hispanics, as an ethnic group, so based on ethnic origin, race and ethnic origin, you may see some differences in how health is distributed as a social risk group. And then finally, those living in the South. So here we see examples of specific age groups, the element of time in life course epidemiology. We see the issue of geographic space, and we also see the issue of um, socioeconomic status and other social factors that may be implicated in dealing with social determinants of health, and in this case, obesity. Now, as I mentioned, the obesity epidemic has soared. Now, it's particularly problematic in the United States, the United States being the one, of the one of the richest countries in the world. But despite that, it has some of the highest obesity rates of all industrialized nations. In fact, it probably has the highest obesity rate of any industrialized nation. There are an estimated 300,000 people that die each year from health problems related to obesity. So it's not just that obesity is a health outcome in and of itself, but it's also a predictor of other health outcomes that are related. It's the second preventable cause of death, the, the second greatest preventable cause of death, the first being smoking. And again, getting back to the scope of the problem when we think about obesity, it contributes to four of the seven leading causes of death, those being cancer, diabetes, heart failure, and stroke. Having said that, let me just go back for a second and say that because of all of these related health issues, being overweight or obesity is one of the most pervasive health problems affecting Americans today. So here we're looking at self-reported prevalence of obesity among adults ages 20 and older. Now what I want you to do is just take a minute, I want you to look at this graph and think about what we've talked about so far. We've talked about the social distribution of health, we've talked about space, we've talked about time, and we've talked about patterns across subgroups of the population. So what I'd like for you to do is just take one minute, look at this diagram, and just jot down what you see. So there are three things that might come to mind when you see this diagram. One is that adults ages 40 to 59 have higher rates of obesity compared to the other two age groups or compared to those over 60 and those between the ages of 20 to 39. So the patterns of the prevalence of obesity vary by age group. So looking at the distribution across the life course is going to be important because if you were to just take a snapshot of this population and not look at the distribution across different phases of life, then you would really miss what's really going on in the population, which is why life course epidemiology is really important. 
One of the other things you'll take away from this graph is if you look at the 60 plus age group, men, I'm sorry, women have higher rates of obesity compared to men. And then finally, if you look at what the average rates are, the gender disparity is not evident until you get to the over 60 age group. So for 20 to 39 year olds and 40 to 59 year olds, there's no gender disparity. But in the 60 plus group, the gender disparity becomes more apparent. And it's not just that it's a disparity, but women have above average prevalence rates and men have below average prevalence rates. So it's thinking about not only just one social factor or one group, but it's really thinking about the interaction and how these behaviors or how these social patterns are clustered together that affect population health. Now just to keep this in perspective and to talk not only about health, but discuss the implications on health care and our health care system, I wanted to just show you this slide to show how costly obesity is as a health condition. Obesity increases a person's health care costs by 77 percent, and that was shown by a recent study. The same study showed that obese people have 30 to 50 percent more chronic conditions than smokers and problem drinkers together. And then finally, obesity costs the U.S. health care system $117 billion annually. Now, before I go to the next slide, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to show you a series of maps. And as I show these series of maps, I want you to look at it and jot down some things that come to mind, as you did with the previous slide. I want you th to think about the prevalence of obesity over time, and the maps will change one year after another after another, so it'll go year by year. Think about the prevalence of obesity over time. I want you to think about the geographic distribution of obesity. And I also want you to notice in the obesity ap epidemic, as it becomes an epidemic, which regions of the country pick up the highest rates the quickest. The darker the color, the higher the rate. So as you can see, there are very clear geographic patterns, spatial patterns. There are clear patterns over time. And the ep epidemic has just taken off from one year to another. It's astonishing. So what's contributing to this? Why is this the case? Is it just the bad American diet? Well, we're not going to talk about policy in this session. But what I do want you to recognize is that although we're talking about individual behavior, social integration, and kind of integration and interaction between people and their environment. The other thing that's important to know about the environment is that policies and kind of the structured part of our environments also matter in terms of forming and informing behavior patterns. So the American diet largely consists of overprocessed fatty foods manufactured by an expanding fast food industry. And this is not to just blame the fast food industry, but it's to say that when we think about social epidemiology, when we think about the social determinants of health, we cannot do that to the exclusion of understanding our surroundings, of understanding how the policies and other aspects of the environment affect individual and group behavior patterns. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is shift and talk a little bit about some of the dominant frameworks from the field of social epidemiology, since we're talking about the social determinants of health. Now, as we discussed, health occurs within a social context, and that context may be defined spatially by geography, as we just saw. It may be defined by group or population, as we also saw with the obesity epidemic. And then finally, it may be specified or defined by social dynamics or social systems, as we discussed earlier with the suicide example. Next, individuals are embedded within societies and populations. So what does that mean? 
Well, we don't exist just as individuals. It's not just individuals themselves, but it's understanding how individuals shape their environment and in turn how those environments are shaped by individuals and the interaction of individuals or of groups of people that lie within those environments.